Initially, Gordon frames on Nikki's leg, but Gordon knows that Nikki is going to try and bring his knee down towards the mat so Nikki can step over it. So Gordon goes from framing on Nikki to doing a self frame on his own leg to make it difficult for Nikki to be. <laughs> Folks, if you want to support the mission, if you want to support the ride just a little bit extra, do it the right way. By checking out my instructional course on passing half guard. And one happy customer of the course has been Ryan, who is a co-founder of the jerky company called Minimal Snacks, which I was somewhat familiar with because I've seen them work with familiar faces in the past. And as someone who makes their own jerky, my wife and I were excited to try it. And when we did, the first thing my wife said was, it's better than yours, which hurt to hear because not only is it better, it only has four ingredients. So if you're interested, use the code LEAMY20 for 20% off your order. Now today we're going to talk about the idea of managing distance through frames and hooks. The idea behind a frame is that it keeps someone from coming towards you. And the purpose of a hook is to keep them from running away from you. So in a traditional Gracie 101 self-defense scenario, we're using frames to keep someone so far away from us that they can't effectively strike us. And as they drive into our frames, we can transfer those frames to hooks, which now keep us so close to them that they can't effectively strike us. So the idea of using all frames or all hooks is really good for defensive purposes. And it's what you can utilize to keep yourself safe for extended periods of time. But things start to get a bit more interesting when we want to attack. When we're setting up our offense, we have to start to use hooks and frames together. And in this scenario, we're using our knee as a frame to prevent them from coming towards us. And then we have our other leg and our collar tie acting as hooks to keep them from running away from us. And if we're able to hold them in this middle ground long enough, we can set up our attacks. It goes back to that Danaher wisdom that you need two hands to tear a piece of paper because one hand pulling and the other pushing is what creates that shearing force. Now when Danaher talks about this shearing force, he's often doing so in the context of finishing a submission. But here we're applying it to the idea of distance management. So if we're using all of our limbs as frames, it's going to be very difficult for our opponent to come towards us. So it's really good at managing distance in one direction, but at any point they can run away because we don't have a hook. But as soon as we throw in a hook, now we start to actually control distance because they can't move towards us because of our frame and they can't run away from us because of our hook. And if we can control them in this middle ground, then we can start to attack. Now, hopefully I did a good job at explaining that because although it's a very simple concept, it's the framework behind all of our guard retention and attacks. The basic idea is that if your opponent is chest to chest, you now have no ability to frame with your legs. So in most cases, it's probably a good idea to start using your arms as frames. So if we find ourselves in a situation, we can start to ask ourselves if we should be using our limbs for frames or hooks. So let's say we find ourselves in this situation here, where we kind of have a little bit of a frame with our knee on this side, but it's about to get beat. And we're using our other hand as a frame to help protect our knee, but on the opposite side, we're using our arm and leg as hooks. Now, in my opinion, at this point here, you really have to start considering bringing this arm in as a frame because you're about to get your guard passed. And if you wait too long to try and bring that frame in, now it's too late and you're getting pinned. Again, same thing with this situation here. I think you need all the frames that you can get. And these two hooks over here are going to be great if you do end up retaining your guard because then you can go into some form of counterattack. However, if it doesn't work, you just have one frame, which is often not enough to prevent a guard pass. So basically hooks and frames comes down to risk management. If you find yourself in this position here, this arm can come up and act as a frame, which means you'll likely recover your guard, but your opponent has the ability to back away from you and reset to a neutral position. Or you can use it as a hook to pull your opponent into you, hoping that you can spin out the back door and go into a darse, which I think is a respectable mentality to have, but it comes with much more risk. I'm going for this, because you know what? In life sometimes, if you don't go for it, you'll always regret it. I'm not I'm a bona fide moron. <laughs> so when you go with the hook option, it can be glorious if it works out. But when it doesn't, the top person is just going to keep smashing you. So when we're talking about things like the omoplata being used to counter the body lock, it's a great option and it can work very well.
but the risk is that you're prioritizing hooks in a situation where they also want to be close to you. So if it doesn't work and they're able to beat your knee, they're going to be chest to chest very quickly. Now, if there's someone who's your same skill level, same size, and you're confident that you can recover from there and you choose to go for the Elma Plata, then great. You weighed the risks and the rewards and you made a decision. But if we find ourselves in this situation here where we shoot our knee shield through and go for an Elma Plata, Maybe they pull out the first time and it doesn't work, which is fine. We can just retry it again. We try it again and they end up standing up and pulling out once more. But the third time we try it, it doesn't work out that well and they beat our knee. And now we have no effective frames because they have a near side underhook and our other hand is being used as a collar tie. And if they have very good top pressure or just a big size advantage, it can be difficult for us to recover. And they can spend the next eight minutes of the match selling my instructional for me and marinating us with top pressure before we can finally recover and reset to a neutral position. So if this is a strategy that you're going with, at least know the risks. And if they do start to beat your knee, you need to bring your arms in as frames as soon as possible. But I think a much less risky way to deal with the body lock is to just set up frames from the beginning. Initially, Gordon frames on Nikki's leg, but Gordon knows that Nikki is going to try and bring his knee down towards the mat so Nikki can step over it. So Gordon goes from framing on Nikki to doing a self frame on his own leg to make it difficult for Nikki to beat that knee while he works to set up a frame with his other hand. Once his secondary frame is in place, he takes that self frame out and doubles down using two straight arm frames to stuff the body lock. Now because Gordon used all of his limbs as frames, he has no ability to force Nikki to engage. Another great way to frame away against a body lock pass, especially if your arm is over your opponent's body, you can use some sort of an off balance like a knee lever and as your opponent recovers their balance, you can thread in your frame and recover your guard. Another great strategy is to take two hands and put it on their cross face arm, making it difficult for them to control your head and shoulders and when they try you can recover. Now in these situations we're using all of our limbs as frames, which is great for defensive purposes, but it also means that our opponent is going to be able to disengage with us after we escape. So to sum this video up, when we're controlling someone from bottom position, we're often doing so by combining frames and hooks. And if we can hold someone in that middle ground long enough, we can start to set up our attacks. And I think we can start to make better decisions if we see guard retention and attacks through the lens of frames and hooks. And if you want to be a bit more risky, maybe you can use techniques that prioritize hooks over frames. So your opponent has a hard time disengaging once you recover and you're able to counterattack. Or maybe you want to be a bit more conservative in the situation in which case you would prioritize techniques that use frames instead of hooks. And the puzzle that I'm trying to put together here is what is the most effective way to use frames and hooks to set up attacks from bottom position, while also minimizing the downside if it fails. And be sure to subscribe because I plan to share what I've found so far in next week's video. And if you want to support me and the channel, the best way to do so is by checking out the instructional, downloading the free PDF outlining my process of watching instructional content, joining the outlier community, and or leaving a fist bump in the comment section and we'll see you in the next video.